So the end of season is upon us. Our championship campaign with Nottingham Forest will end in glory as we go to the Premier League. But can we win the title? So there's only been two fixtures since the last time we met. The first of which was a disappointing 2-2 away draw against Crystal Palace. We actually went behind twice in this game. Thankfully the boys fought back and managed to get us a point. But that's not, not a good start to our uh, title challenge. And this was an even worse one. We went away from home against QPR. Now, they are a good side in this league. They're currently sitting in fifth position. So, they will be fighting in the playoffs come the end of the season. But they absolutely smashed us 3-0. And so, the final two games of the season couldn't be any closer. We are level on points with Watford. We do still have the advantage having the better goal difference. But... It's not an ideal position to be in. I thought we might have had the league wrapped up by now. They face QPR at home today, which is good for us. A difficult side for them. We face Bournemouth. Let's get to the game and see if we can win it in this one or if not the next one. So our squad has quickly returned to pretty much full strength. Dubanovic comes back in after his suspension up top. Lee Pierce comes back in after his injury on the left-hand side. Florian comes back in on the right-hand side after his injury. So our attacking players are now back involved in the first eleven. We are facing Bournemouth, who currently sit in mid-table, haven't had the greatest of seasons, and with a full-strength side at home, I would expect us to absolutely smash these. We'll, <laughs> we'll wait and see how that goes. Being a bit of a quiet start to this game, 25 minutes in, we do get our first highlight. It's Bournemouth on the attack down the left-hand side. Timing plays it in. We do manage to get a clear. Comes out to Rebolo. Don't give away a penalty. We do get a clear, and that's the end of highlight. I'll take that. Four minutes to go before half time. Could it be our first attack and highlight plays game? Lucas Pinter plays it in. Janin gets his head on the Dubanovic. What a save by the keeper. We do manage to get it over the line eventually. It's Florian with his 17th goal of the season. But we'll have to say this again and find out exactly what happened here. Pinter plays it in. It's headed in by Florian. Great save. Dubanovic, great save. The keeper deserves a round of applause, honestly. If he is still on a 6.3, are you kidding me? Them saves were absolutely unbelievable, but thankfully we do go in 1-0 at half-time. I'm happy with how things are going so far. Going by the match stats at least, we are keeping the majority of the possession and creating the majority of the chances, but um, we need to keep on top of things. And speaking of that, I am going to go off attack and into positive. First highlight of the second half comes 64 minutes in. Pierce plays it in. Florian's there. The keeper... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that that one was a bit dodgy. I'll give the game that. With only 13 minutes or so to go, we will look to make some changes. We'll bring on Adam Lewis at left-back for Pinter. Uh, we will also bring on uh, Shorji on the left-hand side for Lee Pierce. Four minutes to go. We need to hold on for this 1-0. We need the win. Florian gets on the end of the cross. It's an easy save for the keeper. And I don't believe that was a highlight. Oh, this one might be, though. Bournemouth on the attack. Howard clears. It comes to... Halt, who plays it in. Lewis clears. Rodriguez can get a clear now. We can counter. Shoji, bring the ball forward. So set him away. Dubanovic is there on the edge. He keeps carrying the ball himself. Kind of find the pass and goes for goal. And he's so greedy. Final highlight of the game. Maybe corner by us is played in. It's cleared by Forrest. Pierce, do not lose the ball. If you lose the ball, we are in all sorts of trouble. Thankfully, he's keeping. <laughs> he's been challenged three times and still keeps the ball. Forrest clear. I haven't really got a man pressurising our defence, thankfully, otherwise that could have been a counter-attacking opportunity for them. Rodriguez shoots, comes to Lewis, oh, all sorts of space, keeper saves, he hits the post. We have had all sorts of opportunities in this game, we're just not taking them. And now we have it, we do get the win. Nottingham Forest 1, Bournemouth 0. Let's go and see how Watford have done. Hopefully QBR have been uh, doing us a little bit of a favour. They did. They drew against Watford 1-1. That is absolutely fantastic. That gives us a two-point cushion. It also means in this final game of the season against West Brom, we can afford a draw and we would still win the league. So we're at the game against West Brom. A pretty much a full strength side. The only player missing is Ilan Delpy. Cabrini will come in in defensive midfield in his place. West Brom is the opposition. They're currently sitting in 10th position. So they are not going to be competing for the playoffs this season. But they've still got a very good side. And just taking a quick look, we've noticed Fausto Vera, our former man. Of course, at Barnsley. They signed for £9.25 million in the summer. And he was a very loyal servant of Barnsley. And good luck to him. But we move on and get into today's game, which of course we only need a point in. We can afford to draw. 
That will be absolutely fine by me. And we have a highlight straight from kickoff. I'm not sure whether to be happy or sad with that. Bentley cuts in from the left-hand side for West Brom. Looks like they're just keeping possession in the midfield. And uh, we'll pick this up when it gets a little bit more interesting. Maybe it's going to get interesting already. Bentley whips it in. We do manage to get it clear. Possession's changed hands a couple of times. But we are on the attack now with Aziz. Finds Pinter in the left side of the uh, box. And Giannin's there. Florian. He has been flourishing on the right-hand side since we've dropped him from the striker role. And that's his 18th goal of the season. Puts us 1-0 up inside 40 seconds. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Pinter doing great. Uh, the cross is decent. Thompson gets his hand to it, but not quite enough. So we will ignore the uh, Watford, uh, Watford, West Brom formation as we try to keep an eye on the Watford game. It is currently 0-0 against Portsmouth at home. That's a game you would expect their win. So as long as we don't get beat, we are fine. Highlight now, Aziz with the corners played in. Dabanovic is there. And Alez Dabanovic gets his sixth goal since joining us in January. And puts us 2-0 up five minutes before half-time. I'm starting to think, boys, we might have this championship title wrapped up. And there we have it, the Nottingham Forest 2, West Brom 0, half-time. Watford 0, Portsmouth 0 in the game we need to keep an eye on. Absolutely fine by me. Let's continue. 20 minutes to go in this match. Things are not really doing anything in the second half, which is fine. We'll bring on Westbrook on this right-hand side. We'll bring on Lewis at left-back. And we'll also bring on Velasovic at centre-back. Watford are now 2-0 up against Portsmouth, but it's probably going to be too little too late for them. We've only five minutes remaining in an hour match, and we are still 2-0 up. We'll get our first highlight of the second half. It's been a, a pretty quiet one. And don't do this to me, boys. West Brom come down the right-hand side with Suarez. It's played in. We do get a clear. And Dabanovic brings it down brilliantly. Completely does the defender. Goes for goal. And Alex Dabanovic gets his seventh goal of this season. His second goal of the game. And puts us out of sight. Now we are winning the championship title with Nottingham Forest. Absolutely fantastic. There was points in this season where I didn't think it would quite happen. We were in a three-way tussle between Stoke City and Watford for the majority of the season. But thankfully... After January, our form has been quite good. And there we have it. There's the confetti. That's what we play a football manager for. Nottingham Forest 3, West Brom 0, Skybet Championship winners. So there is the final league table for this season. Middlesbrough, Stoke, QBR and Everton will be the team fighting in the playoffs. Ourselves and Watford, of course, getting the automatic promotion. Not as many points as we've got in the past. We didn't even break the 100-point mark this season. But... Uh, that's absolutely fine by me. I want to quickly check on the Premier League. Leeds, Leeds are relegated. They're not officially relegated, but they are pretty much relegated. I cannot believe Leeds United, our highest points total, probably our best squad in the Champions League this very season, are going to finish bottom or at least get relegated in the Premier League. Our first side that we have managed took to the Prem. And the, I, I thought it would be Barnsley. Come on, let's be honest. You thought it was, would be Barnsley as well. The EI has been managing them for years at this point. There is That's Brentford, Sam, not Barnsley. Uh, they've barely got any... I don't think they've got any players that we actually brought in for them. So it's a completely re reworked squad. And uh, they're still doing absolutely fine. As are Huddersfield currently sitting in 6th. Birmingham sitting in 9th. Um, Barnsley sitting in 11th. And then Leeds sitting in 20th. But there is the official confirmation of the board. Very, very pleased, obviously, with winning the league title. They weren't expecting us to do that. Uh, our expectation was a top half finish. So we have well and truly gone above expectations. In terms of the season preview, the media predicted us to just miss out on the playoffs as well. With Watford and uh, Sheffield United being the, the sides that get promoted. Obviously, it hasn't quite worked out like that. Sheffield United didn't even get into the playoffs they have missed out so as i mentioned in the last episode our transfer budget will set at 40 million with 173k available in the wages now that is not enough to do what i want to do with this squad i'm not sure if there is any player in this first 11 that i could want in my uh starting 11 in the premier league so we'll start with goalkeeper abubakar agu I do not think this boy is good enough for the Premier League. I will be looking for a new first choice, so he is out. Armando Harewood could be one who we end up keeping. It all depends on what's available in the right-back spot, so we'll keep him in the starting eleven. David Ballas, could he be good enough? He's 20 years old. He's pretty much reached his potential at this stage of his career. Is he good enough for the Premier League? He might 
just be about good enough. Armando Guerrero is not. Um, so that would at least leave one centre-back that we needed to sign. Lucas Pinter, he's not quite there for me. It's his physicals that concern me. His mentals and technicals are fine. If he was much better, more well-rounded physically, because of course we want them bombing up and down the wings all game. I think we're going to have to replace him. Defensive midfield, we need a new D mid. Central midfield, Max Rodriguez is the potential option as a starter. Um, not quite there for me. Central midfield, right midfield. Attacking midfield, Shane Pierce. He could end up being one that we end up keeping as a starter. Um, he's pretty much maxed his potential, but he was a home... No, he wasn't a homegrown player. He was newly signed. Forget, forget what I'm talking about. Left wing, we will need. Striker, we will need. So that leaves us with... Eight positions to fill. <laughs> Eight positions in the starting eleven. Of course, a lot, a lot of these boys will form a squad and become backups. But um, 40 million quid for eight players isn't quite enough. So we will have to do some wheeling and dealing in terms of the player sales and stuff like that. We'll quickly go through our end of season awards. David Ballas, our centre-half winning fans player of the season, of course. He scored six goals and got six assists in the championship this season from centre-half, which is pretty special. David Ballas was signing of the season at three million, and he also won a young player of the season. The goal of the season was a Florian's goal against Everton. I can't quite recall this one. I don't know if we saw this on a live comp or not. And then picking up the ball in his own half, driving past two defenders, getting into the box... And it's a, it's a decent goal. So for next season, the board are expecting us to just fight bravely against relegation. They have added some things into the club culture. Um, and I think there are things that I'm pretty much happy with. Making the most of set pieces, I would like to try and remove that, if at all possible. We'll suggest. We'll suggest again. And they have accepted. So they will no longer be judging us on our set piece play. But everything else um, is absolutely fine by me. And just looking through this Leeds United squad to see maybe what's happened and why they have been relegated. Um, they're not playing, they're playing a narrow formation. So they've done away with wingers, which isn't the end of the world. Um, our wingers weren't the main uh, part of our side. But I've noticed they've ruined Cedric. They've loaned him out to Aston Villa. He's barely been getting any game time. And for potentially one of the best players in the world, at least in my opinion, they've just wasted a season of his development. The only player to average above a seven was Jorge Flores, one of the centre-backs we signed. Uh, Roman Vlasek's done okay, 14 goals in 33 games. Piaggio's done all right. Jim Walker, Pietro Porcino. But um, going below that, they're still playing the likes of, well, Hugh Griffiths, our goalkeeper, has had an absolutely shocking season. Kevin Majaya, I wasn't too impressed with his performances for myself in the Premier League. It looks like he's even had a worse season uh, this year. Uh, now, obviously, they were in the Champions League this season, so that might have played a factor. They did finish third in their group of Mi Milan, Sevilla and PSV, so they got to the Europa League knockouts, where they got all the way to the quarterfinals and got knocked out off penalties against Atletico Madrid. Um, so they've obviously got the quality. Um, maybe it was just the amount of games they ended up playing that's cost them in the long run, but their form in the Premier League has been absolutely dreadful. So when we go up with Nottingham Forest, we will likely be the fifth club that we've managed in the league as Leeds will be relegated. So it'll be ourselves, Huddersfield, Birmingham, Barnsley. Uh, oh, four clubs. Of course, Leeds are getting relegated. So uh, I'm a bit gutted about it. Just uh, I wanted to get as many teams as possible all at once. But never mind, it's only one side. But anyway, boys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are looking forward to the next episode, which will be a massive summer transfer window, get yourself subscribed. And as I've mentioned previous, link down below for Twitch. Please come there and follow me. I will be doing the save and Sunderland save on there now. But anyway, boys, until next time, take it easy.